Hello, and thank you for your interest in Bethesda Market Park. My name is Linda Comis, and I'm a landscape architect and project manager in the design section of the Montgomery County Department of Parks. We are here today to talk about a very special project, and I hope by the time we're finished, you will feel ex as excited about this unique opportunity as we do. This presentation is essentially the same as we delivered to the community during the meetings last week on March 14th and 15th. The presentation includes a lot of images of what the park could be and is intended to spark thoughtful conversation and ideas. We are focusing on the public park, not the private development. There will be public meetings held in the future by the developers team, which will focus on the new mixed use development and the historic farm women's market. We have posted a brief survey on Open Town Hall to continue to gather input. The survey will be open for one month from March 15th through April 16th. A link to the survey is posted on the project webpage and is listed on the final slide in this presentation. We urge you to take the survey and ask your neighbors to take it as well. We are really hoping for a robust response. There's also a list of frequently asked questions with answers posted on the project webpage. And to get to the project webpage, you can just Google Bethesda Market Park and it pops right up. The address is also listed on the last slide of this presentation. And my email is also listed there. So feel free to reach out to me with any questions. In May, we will be hosting a virtual meeting with a more refined plan resulting from the comments reserved during, received during the public outreach process. As I mentioned earlier, we're at the beginning of the design process for a very special park in which two publicly owned surface parking lots will be transformed into a public park. When combined with adjacent Elm Street Park, the new park will be over four acres in size. We all know that Bethesda is a rapidly densifying area and this new public green space will provide an area for both existing and new residents for recreation relaxation, contemplation, and just hanging out and people watching. There are also numerous environmental benefits to converting these expansive impervious areas into green space. I think we can agree that access to open space is important to our quality of life. Slide. <clears throat> the vision to convert these parking lots to a public park began quite a few years ago, before the Bethesda Downtown Sector Plan was being developed, which and that was later adopted and approved in 2017. The Park Recreation and Open Space Plan, also known as the PROS Plan, which was approved more recently in 2022, also supports the new park. The new park is being created under a public-private partnership involving the State of Maryland, the Montgomery County Department of Transportation, including the parking lot district, the Montgomery County Department of Parks, and the town of Chevy Chase, as well as the private developer, Bernstein Development Corporation and EYA Multifamily. We are excited to be working with Rick Parisi and Inat Grinbaum with MPFP, our consulting landscape architects. MPFP has worked on many urban park projects over the years, and many are built over underground parking structures, which is important in this case. They also have worked on several important um, and high profile projects in the DC area, including the Yards Park and the bridge to Diamond Teague Park along the Anacostia River <clears throat> in Southeast DC near the Nats Park. Slide. Um, the sketch plan for the park was approved by the planning board on October 20. 4th, 2019, and included several facilities, including a dog park, flexible lawn space, a stage area focal point, and a multi-generational active zone. Slide. Slide. The overall vision for the park consists of these four guiding principles, a vibrant community destination for events and gatherings, should be multi-generational, should have multi-generational activities and amenities. It should be welcoming to all county area residents, workers and visitors, and it should provide a promenade connection to the Capitol Crescent Trail. Slide. As we do with all park projects, we begin with a preliminary program of requirements. 
For those of you unfamiliar with the term, it's really just a list of facilities for which we know the need exists and, and we want to study them further during the early design stages. The preliminary program is developed based on planning guidance, in this case, the Bethesda Downtown Sector Plan, the PROS Plan, the Sketch Plan, and other planning documents. We also look at what existing facilities are nearby and the demographic data. This information informs us as to what the unmet recreational demands are. Slide. This slide contains the facilities that we asked the consultant to consider, including in their preliminary design considerations. And at this point, I'd like to introduce Rick Parisi of MPFP to continue describing the early vision for the park. Thank you, Linda. I'm Rick Parisi from MPFP, Landscape Architects. Uh, in New York City, and as Linda mentioned, um, you know this is this is a wonderful opportunity, and uh, we're we're very excited about it because it's uh, not often that we come in uh, when when a lot of study has been done already uh, to start to develop a program and to identify a site of parking lots that can be converted to uh, to actually extension of a park. And what you see here is the overall Bethesda downtown plan. You see Chevy Chase. Downtown Bethesda, you see our site, the green area right here is Elm Street Park. We're along 46th Street here, and we will be extending it through here. And this is a, a approximately another, another um, two acres park. It's an enlargement of this. And this is an area of the existing conditions. So you have Elm Street Park here, you have Lot 24 and Lot 10, and the Farm Women's Market here. The project that we're just going to discuss this today is lot 10 and lot 24, and that's the extension of the park proper. We will be back uh, with additional plans on the private development portion of the project that have, uh, you know, has another portion of open space in it. And it's basically taking Elm Street Park at 2.19 acres, uh, what we call Park North, Bethesda Park North at 1.17 acres, and then Bethesda Market Park South at 0.9 acres, uh, at an additional 0.82 acres of open space around the farm women's market, which is a design in progress and that we will come back with you uh, to discuss. Uh, this entire complex now, you know, this, this open space, this public open space will, will, will be considerably more than four acres of open space. And so again, uh, some of the, uh, Existing conditions, mixed-use buildings, commercial buildings. This new mixed-use uh, building here is residential, retail at the base. Uh, there'll be smaller uh, residential entries on the park. And then the farm women's market will have an addition to it. And then we'll create this open space around it that is programmable uh, and will be able to be programmed with uh, Bethesda Market Park North. Uh, a, a basically just a circulation diagram. You're on Willow Lane here, 46th Street here, Wall Street here, and currently the pathways through Elm Street Park work like this. There's the Capitol Crescent Trail that will come this way and be extended here. It will be along Willow Lane. There is a shared space around the Farm Women's Market that'll be partially uh, shared vehicular space. And there's an entrance into the garage, which is underneath this park. Uh, this space is really mostly pedestrian centric. Uh, so it's just really accessible at minimal times because there's another garage entry here along Leland. So we as landscape architects, when we when we design a park, we think about what you know human nature uh, is natural for people to do, you know, and to want to do. Uh, the, the human wants to connect with nature on all levels. You know, whether you sit on lawn, whether you work in a garden, whether you sit under trees, just to be out in nature. And that's that's one of the things we think about when we think about creating social environments for people. And the underlying concept for us is always layering in this kind of level of biophilic design, whether it's in form, or the fact that it is nature, that you can touch, feel, be in nature, uh, be part of nature, 
um, sit within nature and watch other people walk through. It's it's a series of fluid forms in our mind that that connect you with nature and provide places to sit and contemplate in nature, places to program within nature. So this is our basis of design. And then we take our, the program that Linda discussed earlier, um, and we started to develop you know, how that program might work, or what the relationships are, and what the sense of scale is within the space that we have. And what we came up with was um, a large flexible lawn concept with a focal point coming down the Warnarf, which is the shared space, which comes around the farm women's market. And there's potentially a focal point there, maybe a stage, maybe a platform, maybe a shade structure. There's a shade garden behind this, because what you don't see on this plan, and you'll see on the enlargements when we bring it up, is there's a considerable amount of grade change uh, along 46th Street. So there's about a five or six foot grade change from where the farm women's market is. You stand there today, you see that this parking lot is above the farm women's market by about six feet. So what we're doing is we're basically carving this out, creating an edge condition, and then creating a series of rooms within the park. And, and all these rooms will basically be programmable to some level, but basically, you know, there, there's a series of entrances, one entrance here, one entrance here, one entrance here. And, and then the rooms are all connected by what we are proposing currently in study is lifting and lifting the uh, crosswalks at the parks, the south to the north, and then to Elm Street, so that there's more clear uh, sense of connectivity, physical and visual connectivity from one portion of the program park to the other. So in, in, in the uh, park, we think there's a social garden, we think there's a game room, there's some reading rooms, the entry rooms. We think that potentially there's a multi-generational uh, active zone in the South Park uh, and a large dog park and a small dog park. But around this, around all these parks, we think there's a system of circulation that connects them um, and is actually a very fluid system that, again, is more of that biophilic layering of form and, and space and, you know, connects one park to the other as a necklace of parks. That's the system here. And you see in the dark blue is basically the streetscape and the smaller paths within. And then with the light blue overlay, that's the outer loop. And that outer loop is is 3,200 linear feet of pathway. So it's about 1,200 steps. And you can do this outer loop. You can go through the whole park, go through Elm Street Park, come back, and then you can do an inner loop as well. So for us, you know, it's a, it's a, it's basically a series of parks that span two streets and they're connected physically and uh, visually. First part is what are the amenities in the park on a daily basis? And we talked about that a little bit. You know, there's a great lawn that could be programmable. There's a potentially a stage element here. These are the grades. So you're at 347 here. You step up gradually. It's only a 2% slope, so you don't actually realize this slope, but it's stepping up to 349 and then stepping up again to 354 and 357 here. So the park off 46th Street is not accessible. It's basically a green edge that the park is built into. And we're expanding 46th Street, building a new sidewalk and new planting strip with trees here. And you'll look, be able to look down into the park. There'll be a very nice visible, you know, visible connectivity, uh, but not a physical connection. So again, there's the game room here, maybe ping pong, maybe an outdoor pool, outdoor foosball. This room could be used for other program uh, elements as well. You know, you could program this. You could have a party here, a small gathering, and then there's the small reading rooms, and then the entry, entry uh, plaza with the mounds. And again, we're sculpting this entire park to be, you know, from in form, in two-dimensional and three-dimensional form to have these biophilic movements in. And here's a section. Linda mentioned that there's a garage below. So this is the new garage that will replace some of the parking that was in the lot. And the park steps up above that. There's over three feet, sometimes four feet of soil here. So very uh, sustainable for trees, large trees. And it steps up to 46th Street here, which is about 
a three foot grade change, four foot grade change at this point. So on a daily basis, we think we have a shade garden, a garden that you can sit in under the trees and look over the great lawn. We have a programmable lawn, but on a daily basis, there might be Adirondack chairs that are movable, uh, flexible seating. Uh, you could sit on this lawn with, um, you know, with a blanket. You could kick a ball around. We don't think it's organized sports, um, but it's a it's a place you could throw a frisbee, a place you could, you know, bring the kids and run around. It's a multi generational great lawn and and a wonderful open space that is the mostly the sunniest portion of our site. Um, that could also be obviously used for performances, as we discussed here. Just some inspirational views. Our pathways around the Great Lawn will be shaded with seating, with, with planting on the edge along 46th Street, looking down at the other path below and, and at the lawn. And you see Frisbee, picnicking, just lounging. There will be some, not quite really a formal amphitheater, but there will be you know seating elements built into the berm that can double as an amphitheater or just a passive place to sit. The um, amenities that when we talked about the game room, there's outdoor ping pong, there's outdoor foosball, chess, and other board games, and there's even outdoor um, pool tables that can be purchased and, and used in this space. We see the space as rather flexible and things could be moved around in it and it could be programmed for other things as well. And just some basic entry garden, uh, you know, feel, look and feel with the berms and the pathways, again, the biophilic movements some comfortable seating areas within the reading rooms, and then also movable seating in there as well. There's some images of the game, all exterior gaming. This is uh, Bryant Park in New York City. And again, some images of how we believe that that lawn and the mounding and the pathways will, will uh, be you know, developed, again, with this biophilic layering. And just, you know, some more, uh, other opportunities, a lot of contemplating, people watching. There's a promenade along the residential entries here. This represents the residential entries, individual entries to this, this portion of the residential here. And just some more inspirational images. These are some images from the Yards Park. And some planting inspiration. So uh, programming opportunities. So we discussed the daily basis and, you know, what, what can we do here in this great lawn and this, in these spaces for events, uh, programmed events? And, you know, it's a pretty significant space. It's, it's about 180 by 140. Um, we could do movie night. You could do small concerts. You could do uh, a weekly market. We could do uh, a tasting menu for local restaurants. Um, it's, it's, there's a number of things, you know, that could happen in this space. In the smaller spaces, you could do some birthday parties. You can do some recitals. Could be doing outdoor classroom uh, space here. These are big enough to have a whole classroom and do a recital there. Uh, you know, really, it really provides a lot of opportunity for flexibility in terms of programming. Chess tournaments, you know, book fairs. Uh, gaming competitions, uh, just flexible gathering space, you know, the idea of some pop-up library, uh, you know, movable uh, movable tables and chairs, so really flexible social seating opportunities, you know, for events. And again, pop-up performances. I mean, somebody could come here, a small group of, of people come here, so, you know, a small jazz band that could come here and play in the park. You know, it's a very, you know, versatile series of spaces. So Bethesda Market Park South, we see is a little bit more active. And in, in terms of activity, we talked about a multi-generational active zone. So what is that? That is, you know, again, with this biophilic layer, these series of mounds that create the spaces and pathways that wrap around it. We think, we think there's some exercise equipment potentially. There's uh, maybe some climbing mounds. There's some swings that, you know, all ages could sit in. They're not, you know, children's swings. 
And and then again, there's a large dog park and a small dog park. So this is a section through there. You see some of the mounds and the climbing features. And, you know, adult swings can be something very sculptural. The outdoor fitness can be sculptural. There's a lot of components today that are, you know, that are very fun and playful. And so there's opportunity to build this into the landscape, build it into the topography of the landscape and build mounds for climbing um, and build mounds to sculpt the dog park. Um, again, as I mentioned before, there is a pathway that wraps around this entire area on the other side of the fence of the dog park with seating. So you can people watch. You can walk around the outside of this park and not necessarily be in the middle of the activity and you can view it. So just as a comparison, the, 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 the dog parks are a total of about 9,900 square feet currently in this design. And these are just some other images of dog parks in New York City and, and other areas. This is McCarran Park, quite a, quite a big park in, in, in uh, Brooklyn, um, Madison Square Park. A lot of these dog parks are very active and they're, they're inside of other parks. And some of them are small. The one that we did at the yards, which uh, we'll show you a picture of later, is, is a, a rather small one, but very actively used. Some of the interesting things you can do, or maybe maybe it's you know a very sculptural swing for adults and children, uh, a climbing you know wall built into the mound, as we talked about, and then events that you could hold in the dog park. Some more interesting sculptural and you know just standard standard uh, fun, playful, colorful uh, exercise equipment in the park. Some dog parks. This is the Yards Dog Park right here. Uh, these are some of the, the benches. We actually put really nice benches in the park there, same benches that are throughout the park. And, you know, we can do some fun fencing features so that there's still a lot of visibility. We want to we wanna design this whole park so that it's got a, a minimal amount of maintenance, but a sustainable amount of maintenance. So all of our vegetation is going to be native. Uh, we don't want to create a lot of, you know, uh, perennial you know, work and a lot of other work with uh, with plants and materials throughout the park. We want it to be sustainable, durable, and and not have to replace uh, material. So some of the uh, programming opportunities for the park south are, you know, what has happened in Elm Street Park already. I think it was one or two years it's been done. It uh, was the Yappy Hour. Um, that could occur here, right? And then again, you could also, I, we think you could have birthday parties and other events in the active portion of the park very easily. And our final thoughts that we'd like to leave everyone with and, and try to invoke some, some thought on, on you, the community's part, because this is a public-private partnership and we're reaching out to learn you know, what, what the public would like to see. Um, we're presenting things that we think work, have worked, and they're, they're currently in other parks and other urban spaces that are public, you know, throughout the country. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, wonderful opportunities here to layer art in, to, to work, you know, and do music events, um, just contemplating, you know, areas, really just, you know, mixing passive with active and uh, really, you know, becoming your town square, your, your park in, in downtown Bethesda. And so the next steps, as Linda mentioned, well, what this is uh, established for, this and the two meetings we had, um, it's so that we can collect, synthesize, and present the community feedback. Right? With that, we'll develop uh, additional program options, and uh, we'll pre present that um, in the next meeting, which will be a, a digital meeting on May 24th at 7 p.m. There'll be a Zoom. There, um, from there, you know, there'll be a survey up um, for, from March 15th through April 15th, there'll be, which is the virtual town hall. And then, as Linda mentioned, Linda's email is right here. Um, you can click on these links to go to the project website, see any of these drawings, and, and fill in your survey. We really urge everybody to speak up and talk about what they like about the programming opportunities and the park, 
and and you know give us feedback so we can work with you to create this wonderful opportunity of turning you know parking into a park.